Thank you all so much for joining me today and studying A Course in Miracles. We're reading from the Foundation for Inner Peace version of A Course in Miracles. I'm Miracle Willie, forgiveness teacher from the Ozarks, and we're ready for Lesson 237, Now Would I Be As God Created Me, here on Saturday, August the 24th of 2024. Now Would I Be As God Created Me. Today I will accept the truth about myself. I will arise in glory and allow the light in me to shine upon the world throughout the day. I bring the world the tidings of salvation which I hear as God my Father speaks to me. And I behold the world that Christ would have me see. Aware it ends the bitter dream of death. Aware it is my Father's call to me. Now would I be as God created me. Christ is my eyes today, and he the ears that listen to the voice for God today. Father, I come to you through him who is your Son, and my true self as well. Amen. Okay, well, let's be listening to, to God through the through the ears that Christ has given us and through the eyes that Christ sees. And let's look at the whole world that way and see a world redeemed from sin and death and alive in holiness, in oneness, in love. Uh, today we're ready in the text reading to read, and we're in chapter 26, the transition, and we're ready for section three, the borderland. And so while you're uh, going to the, to the borderland, I'd love for you to follow along if you can. Um, and if, if you don't follow along while I read it, I would encourage you to go back and, you know, unless you're, unless you're not able to for some reason, 
can't read or you're blind or something, and then just listen to me and listen to it enough times where it really sinks in. But if, if, you, if you're able, um, getting as many senses as possible and reading the lesson while I'm reading it or after I've read it at another time during the day perhaps, um, I would encourage that. Um, maybe have a little marker and mark things that really speak to you so you can go back and look at them again. Now what I be is God created me. Okay, and then what's going on around the world? It's can opener day. And the can opener, you know, the can was invented first, and then oh, I think it was around 50 years later they invented the can opener in 1858. And before that, you used to chisel and a hammer to open up the can, I guess. <laughs> International Day Against Intolerance, Discrimination, and Violence Based on Musical Preference, Lifestyle, and Dress Code. Now, that's a long one. Of course, we don't want to have, uh, we don't want to, we don't want to be against anything. We want to be, you know, I guess we just want to recognize what's not true and don't give it any energy. If you go against it, you're basically saying it's real and you've got to fight against it. We don't want to do that. But it is nice to accept people for the way they want to live based on their dress code, their lifestyle, their musical preferences. Okay, so we don't want to discriminate. Uh, let's see, International Strange Music Day, <laughs> Knife Day, uh, Peach Pie Day, make a pie out of the Prunus Persica, uh, Waffle Day and Waffle Iron Day, Pluto Demoted Day, and that's when the International Astronomical Union uh, demoted Pluto from a planet to a, uh, I don't know what they demoted it to, maybe an asteroid or something? I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what they call it now. Uh, but it, uh, there is some argument on whether they should have demoted it, I guess. And it, that, that happened in 2006 on this day. Uh, shooting Star Day. Yeah, well that's, I look for a shooting star. Uh, Vesuvius Day. Vesuvius, the volcano, erupted in 79 A.D. Uh, Ways Goose Day. Uh, you know, I, I got the idea. That was um, happened on the St. Bartholomew's Day. And it's at the end of summer. And it's uh, where, where you're getting ready to do your work by candlelight uh, if you're a, a printer. And, and the printers were the ones that uh, they held a feast called Ways Goose and it was usually paid for by the, the printers uh, because they are the ones that needed a little bit of light, I guess. Uh, they, they'd have a goose and, and cook it. And that's how it got the name Ways Goose. You'd come a ways and eat a goose. <laughs> uh, it started about the time that, that it might even been Gutenberg that, that, uh, that was participating in this, but it was about the time the press was uh, invented. Weather Complaint Day. Yeah, everybody always has something to say about the weather, huh? William Wilberforce Day, and he was a British politician, philanthropist, and leader in the abolition of the slave trade, or, you know, to abolish the slave trade. He was born on this day in 1759 and died in 1833. And then we've got in our edible landscaping the uh, tiger tooth jujube. And it says of the tiger tooth jujube in edible landscaping, tiger tooth is a long, slender, date-shaped fruit up to two and a half inches in length, very sweet, and a favorite of Paul Miller, who was the curator of the Gainesville, Florida jujube, coll jujube collection. As most jujube varieties, young trees can have juvenile thorns. Older trees are much less thorny. Trees are a small tre trees are of small stature in zone six and seven, reaching twelve to fifteen feet. Warmer warmer area height and spread can be eighteen to twenty five feet. These trees are not grafted, but on their own rootstock. If a sucker from the main plant comes up, it is also a tiger tooth jujube and can be transplanted to its own spot. Zone six through nine. And it's a Zizyphus jujuba is the uh, genus and species. 
And our word for peace is out of the Anut Eskimo language of uh, Canada, and it's Tutkiam. So, Tutkiam be with you. Peace be with you. Tutkiam. Okay, now let's see. What else can, do we need to do? Anything here? Um, yeah, let's go take a look at uh, the borderland. And as you're turning there, keep in mind, now would I be as God created me. You know, you, we need to see ourselves the way God created us and not get wrapped up in the, the conflicts and the, 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 the ideas of loss we learned about uh, in this world. That, that there's another way of seeing it that's real. That we don't lose anything. We're always gained. We always benefit. That's our reality. And so does our brothers and sisters who are one with us. No conflict. Okay, Roman numeral 3 in chapter 26, the transition, the borderland. Complexity is not of the ego. How could it be when all he knows is one? He knows of one creation, one reality, one truth, and but one son. Nothing conflicts with oneness. How then could there be complexity in him, in God? What is there to decide? For it is conflict that makes choice possible. The truth is simple. It is one without an opposite. The truth is simple. It is one without an opposite. And how could strife enter in its simple presence and bring complexity where oneness is? <clears throat> the truth makes no decisions. For there's nothing to decide between. <laughs> and only if there were could choosing be a necessary step in the advance toward oneness. What is everything leaves room for nothing else. Yet is this magnitude beyond the scope of this curriculum. Yet is this magnitude. What's this magnitude? What is everything leaves room for nothing else. Yet is this magnitude beyond the scope of this curriculum. Nor is it necessary we dwell on anything that cannot be immediately grasped. Wow. So the oneness of our identity is beyond the curriculum, but this curriculum leads us to the gate where we enter in to this oneness. It, 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 it's in, what we're learning is in the world of perception where opposites seem real and where we, uh, we choose based on what's, what is harmless, what is forgiving, what is loving, and, and we move into higher realms of our own awareness as we do that, our oneness. Paragraph 2. There is a borderland of thought that stands between this world and heaven. It is not a place, and when you reach it, it is apart from time. Here is the meeting place where thoughts are brought together, where conflicting values meet, and all illusions are laid down beside the truth, where they are judged to be untrue. This borderland is just beyond the gate of heaven. Here is every thought made pure and wholly simple. Here is sin denied, and everything that is received instead. Here is sin denied, and everything that is received instead. So we're learning to deny sin um, and, and recognize that the only reality is God's oneness. Paragraph 3. This is the journey's end. We've referred to it as the real world, and yet there is a contradiction here, and that the words imply a limited reality, a partial truth, a segment of the universe made true. This is because knowledge makes no attack upon perception. They are brought together, and only one continues past the gate where oneness is. Salvation is a borderland where place and time and choice have meaning still, and yet it can be seen that they are temporary, out of place, and every choice has been already made. 4. 
Nothing the Son of God believes can be destroyed, but what is truth to him must be brought to the last comparison that he will ever make, the last evaluation that will be possible, the final judgment upon this world. It is the judgment of the truth upon illusion, of knowledge on perception. It has no meaning and does not exist. This is not your decision. It is but a simple statement of a simple fact. Let's go back and look at that again before we finish this paragraph. Nothing the Son of God believes can be destroyed. Nothing the Son of God believes can be destroyed. But what is truth to him must be brought to the last comparison that he will ever make, the last evaluation that will be possible, the final judgment upon this world. It is the judgment of the truth upon illusion, of knowledge on perception. It has no meaning and does not exist. This is not your decision. It is but a simple statement of a simple fact. But in this world, there are no simple facts, because what is the same and what is different remain unclear. The one essential thing to make a choice at all is this distinction. The one essential thing to make a choice at all is this distinction. And herein lies the difference between the worlds. In this one, choice is made impossible. In the real world, is choosing simplified. <laughs> Paragraph 5. Salvation stops just short of heaven. So the real world where choosing is simplified is stops just short of heaven. For only perception needs salvation. <laughs> we start learning that there's lots of forms of, of, uh, of, of conflict, but they're all forms. Underneath it is the illusion of loss. And once we realize that, well, then we just start making the only choice there ever was to make. Choose for our peace and the abundance of God. Salvation stops just short of heaven, for only perception needs salvation. Heaven was not lost, and so cannot be saved. Heaven was never lost, and so cannot be saved. Yet who can make a choice between the wish for heaven and the wish for hell, unless he recognizes they are not the same? This difference is the learning goal this course has set. To, to see the difference between heaven and hell. Uh, the idea of loss and abundance, the idea of sinlessness and sin, or holiness and uh, unholiness, or sin. Salvation stops just short of heaven, for only perception needs salvation. Heaven was never lost, and so cannot be saved. Yet who can make a choice between the wish for heaven and the wish for hell, unless he recognizes they are not the same? This difference is the learning goal this course has set. It will not go beyond this aim. Its only purpose is to teach what is the same and what is different, leaving room to make the only choice that can be made. Paragraph 6. There is no basis for a choice in this complex and overcomplicated world, for no one understands what is the same and seems to choose where no choice really is. The real world is the area of choice made real, not in the outcome, but in the perception of alternatives for choice. That there is choice is an illusion. That there is choice is an illusion. <laughs> Yet within this one lies the undoing of every illusion, not accepting this. So you can practice forgiveness of this, um, and that's what we want to do. That there is a choice is an illusion. Yet within this one lies the undoing of every illusion, not accepting this. And I think the last paragraph is number seven. Is not this like your special function where the separation is undone by change of purpose in what once was specialness and now is union? 
all illusions are but one, and in the recognition this is so lies the ability to give up all attempts to choose between them and to make them different. How simple is the choice between two things so clearly unlike truth and illusion? <laughs> there is no conflict here. No sacrifice is possible in the relinquishment of an illusion recognized as such. Where all reality has been withdrawn from what was never true, can it be hard to give it up and choose what must be true? That's where all reality has been withdrawn from what was never true, can it be hard to give it up and choose what must be true? <laughs> he's just helping, he's just wanting us to see that, that all these myriad of choices and forms of nothingness are just that, nothing. And that the only choice we want is the choice for peace, for happiness, for God, for truth, for reality. Okay, uh, try your best to every hour of the day today to bring this idea, now would I be as God created me, to your mind. Hang out with it for a moment and give God thanks and ask him for guidance. Now would I be God created me, now would I be as God created me. Today I will accept the truth, the truth about myself. I will arise in glory and allow the light to shine shine upon the world throughout the day I bring the world the tidings of salvation which I hear as God my Father speaks to me and I behold the world that Christ would have me see where it ends the bitter dream, the bitter dream of death. Where it is my father's call, my father's call to me. Now would I be as God created me. Now would I be as God created me. Christ is my eyes, Christ is my eyes today, and he the ears that listen to the voice for God today. Father, I come to you through him, through him who is your son, and my true self as well, my true self as well. Christ is my eyes today, and he my ears. Christ is my eyes, my eyes today, and he the ears that listen to the voice for God today. Father, I come My true self as well, amen, amen. What is, what is salvation? What is salvation? Salvation is a promise made by God that you would find, find your way, find your way to Him at last. Salvation is undoing in the sense that it does nothing, failing to support the world of dreams and malice. The song 
song of our rejoicing is the call to all the world that freedom is returned, that time is almost over, and God's Son has but an instant more to wait until his Father is remembered. Are done, eternity has shined away the world, and only heaven now exists at all. Now would I be as God created me? Now would I be as God created me? again. Today I will accept the truth about myself. I will arise in glory and allow the light to shine, to shine upon the world throughout, throughout the day. I bring the world the tidings of I hear as God my Father speaks to me, and I behold the world that Christ would have me see, where it ends the bitter dream, the bitter dream of death, where it is my Father's call, my Father's call to to the voice for God today. Father, I come to you through him who is your son and my true self as well. Amen. Now would I be as God And out of the Inuit language of, of, uh, is uh, Tutkiyam, for peace. Now would I be as God created me. Tutkiyam. Be aware that you are as God created you and claim it. Be it. See the holiness in yourself and your brothers. See your unlimited expansiveness. Now would I be as God created me. Tat Kiyom.